If you've been watching the site, then you may have noticed that we've been carrying more and more products from our friends at Adafruit. And this is a product from them that I'm actually very excited about. This is the Fade Candy Board, and it was actually a collaboration between Adafruit and Micah from Scanline. The Fade Candy is a controller for running a huge amount of RGB LEDs, and it'll run any LEDs that use the popular WS2811 or 2812 controllers. And these are everywhere. They're in the NeoPixel boards from Adafruit. They're also in a lot of the uh, addressable LED string lights that we've been carrying for a while, and you can find them all over the place out in the wild. And as long as they use that controller, then you can connect them to the Fade Candy board, and the board has eight channels that are each capable of running up to 64 of those addressable LEDs. Also, there's a lot of built-in smarts on this board. The firmware on the Fade Candy does a lot of processing, color correction, and dithering. And what the dithering algorithm does is it actually increases the color depth of this board. So you've seen RGB LEDs uh, before all over the place, um, and you'll notice that some of them ha seem to have more colors than others. And the truth is that a lot of the time it's not in the hardware, it's in the software. They're using a a uh, technique called temporal dithering that actually flashes close uh, colors that are close on the color spectrum on a single pixel to give the impression that you actually have more color depth than you do. So the colors that come off of this thing are actually mouthwatering. Very cool colors. I mean, in short, it makes your rainbows more rainbowy than their rainbows. I've downloaded the Fade Candy project repository, which has the uh, server, the Fade Candy server, as well as a bunch of examples for Python and processing and some other uh, languages. So I'm going to open up that folder here, and you can see that we've got the firmware, the uh, layout files. This is an open source project, so all of it is here. Um, and what we're going to be interested in is the bin or binary folder. And then you can see that we've got the Fade Candy server application here. So I'm going to start that up, and you'll see that it says server listening. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB, and you should see that it's found the device. USB device Fade Candy, it gives it a serial number, and then tells you that it's attached. Now that it's attached and the server has found it, we can actually open up a page uh, on this local server in our browser and do, uh, we can see which boards are attached, we can identify which board is which if you have a bunch of them attached to your system, and we can also run some basic tests to see if all the LEDs are lighting up, things like that. So I'll open up Firefox, and you can see I've already got the server running. And here it is. It shows one of our controllers is connected here. We can do test patterns, we can turn them to full brightness, or half brightness. And we can also click the Identify button, which will blink the status LED on whichever board you have selected. So that way, if you have a big installation and you're trying to find the board, uh, you don't have to identify it by serial number. You can just blink the LED and find it. So now that that server is running, we can open up Processing and get into these processing examples. Um, all of these examples are in the repository for Fade Candy, and you can find them under Examples and then Processing. And just open up uh, a couple of these that are specifically written for 8x8 grids. So the first one is called Grid 8x8 Dot, and when you run that, on the screen you'll see a grid that represents all of the LEDs on your matrix, and you'll have sort of a flashlight uh, that follows your cursor. And as you move that around the grid, it will move one for one around your matrix. And here you can see that the um, color correction and the dithering are making a huge difference here compared to a lot of the drivers that you see when you're running these big uh, displays. Um, you would be tempted to just write a circle to this display, but um, this is actually doing a little bit of dithering and it's doing some, uh, some fade where it gets kind of cool towards the center and warm towards the outside. It's a nice effect. We'll open up the wave fronts example and run that. And you get the same grid, and then as you move your cursor around that grid, you generate little waves, uh, like if it was a pool of water. And the more intense the movement is, um, the more intense the color is. So if you look at the NeoPixel matrix here, you can see we get some really vibrant color as I move my cursor around. 
Finally, uh, here is a uh, processing example called Orbits. And when you run that, it will give you two orbiting orbs, I suppose, and they spin at a fixed rate, and as you move your cursor up and down the screen, um, you get either a smaller or a larger pair of these um, colored lights. And you can actually see on the matrix some of the tricks that they're doing to really expand the color depth and kind of give you an impression that there are more pixels than there are here um, are really helping give the impression that there are um, almost colored lights behind the board shining through these holes. So um, it's a really cool effect and it's a really simple example to get up and running.